Hello, and uh, welcome back to another edition of Telescope Man. This is uh, going to be number three in a series of beginner ham radio uh, podcasts. And again, I'm going to try to use pictures to uh, kind of tell a little story and maybe teach some of the uh, newbies out there some basic uh, ham shack uh, setup te- techniques. So, without further ado, let's get going. Let's open up the pictures. And today's presentation is going to be a, really about grounding and uh, what we call RF radio frequency in the shack where you don't want it. So we're going to do a little talking about grounding, proper grounding, and uh, show you some of the things that uh, I've been using here in my shack to eliminate any problems with grounding. Now I got to say when I first started, my grounding was uh, terrible. I was using regular wire. Even though it was 8 gauge wire, it was uh, regular wire to ground all the equipment. And I also made another fatal mistake, which I'll show you when I first set up the grounding. And uh, it was really so bad that uh, the USB ports on my computer would disconnect whenever I keyed up. And many times the ICOM 7000 would just shut off because RF was getting back into the radio, which was no good. Uh, So I had to really uh, start reading a lot about proper grounding because I had thought that A heavy gauge wire would work uh, to ground the equipment. And of course my technique for connecting that all together behind the radios was wrong too. So let's get started. First I want to show you what the proper, one of the proper things is you should use to ground all the equipment. And that's braid. And you know you can find all types of braid, all lengths, some with connectors and some just plain braid. Uh, Basically I use just plain braid. Uh, I haven't really uh, went out and bought these little end connectors like what you see here and make it all look real pretty and nice. Uh, I simply uh, poke a hole in the braid using a pen or a pencil just poke a little hole and then uh, I use a bolt uh, stainless steel bolt to uh, connect the braid pieces of braid together I don't really use these uh, end connectors like you see here but you can buy them that way or you can make them uh, if you so choose to do so now I'm going to give you a suggestion. You can jump on eBay and put in grounding braid and you're going to get bunches and bunches of uh, folks selling this braid. Now the other item uh, that's used for grounding is uh, strips of copper. and I'm going to show you that in a little while. You can use that too. Uh, That's also very good. Uh, I just chose braid. I went out to uh, eBay and bought about 25 feet of braid and three quarter inch and that's what I'm using to ground all the equipment. So this is what I'm talking about right here, this braid. And of course you can buy it in strips. This is what I did. I bought strips of it off of uh, eBay and you can buy all different lengths you know you want to get at least half inch uh, preferably three quarter inch Uh, the one inch is also very good but it gets a little bit expensive Uh, I'd say three quarter inch will be just fine uh, if you follow all these different techniques your ground will be uh, just fine Uh, On a later video, I'll show you the outside ground rod. There is a uh, grounding rod right outside the window that's about uh, eight feet in the ground. And uh, 
basically everything winds up connected to that rod and it's a very short distance away from all the radios right outside the window which is behind my radio so uh, the distance that that final uh, braid grounding uh, strap goes is not very far I would say from the window to the ground rod outside is probably no more than four feet so I have a very short ground and it's a straight run uh, directly from the equipment uh, outside uh, uh, to the uh, grounding rod. So anyway, I'm using this braid to ground all the equipment. And again, you can uh, get on eBay and uh, just search for uh, grounding braid and uh, you'll get all kind of hits and people selling uh, this grounding braid. All right, so uh, the, the real thing about grounding the equipment and probably the most important thing is I found a site and I've got a couple of the pictures off that site uh, on the internet that showed the proper way to ground. So if, let's start with the Im, improper way to ground. So here's a little diagram. Now this is the way I had it originally. Originally, I had a grounding bar right here, a grounding bar behind the equipment, and then I just came on down, you know, and I attached all my other equipment, the uh, tuner, the amp, uh, the radios to this uh, ground bar, and then I went picked a spot and I went outside and put it on the ground rod and I thought I was doing really good uh, unfortunately what happened and a lot of people do this and uh, when they have problems they, some of them don't know what's going on but this fully explains it you run a great risk of having a what's called a ground loop uh, develop and you're not it's the ungrounded ground it's not really grounded. You've got a ground loop in here and this stuff will get back into the uh, tuner and back into the amp and back into your radio and cause you a world of problems. Like I told you, uh, it was so bad that uh, my computer, which was across the room from the radios, all the USB ports would disconnect. You know, they do that little sound, ba -bong, you know, every time when I keyed up. And I, to get the computer working again, I'd have to turn it off and uh, turn it back on again to get the USB ports to connect again. So this is not the way to do a ground. And you'll see a lot of things on there where they've got uh, the wires uh, running in this kind of configuration. And this is improper. This is not the way to do it. So if you, if you've got a rig that's you're running this way and it seems to be working, you can sure improve it by changing this up. And I think this also has a lot to do with uh, my uh, low noise level. I think this really affected my low, lowering the noise floor in the radios when I corrected all this. So this is not how you want to do it. So how do you want to do it? Well, let's just change it a little bit. Now here's what I did. <clears throat> I went, I, I considered the tuner, the antenna tuner to be the main spot because that's, that's what's actually uh, making the an antenna wire become resonant. So I ran a very short piece of, um, braid off of this uh, antenna tuner and then I attached all the other pieces of, of equipment directly to that braid and straight out into the ground as this indicates okay so I didn't try to come down here and connect this amp onto this piece of braid here I ran a separate piece of braid to one common spot 
And how I did that, I just punched a little hole into the braid, and then I used some washers, steel washers and stainless steel bolts and screws and nuts to attach all this other braid to this one point, which was very close to this, this antenna tuner. So this, this piece of braid is not very long. I would say it's uh, less than one foot. Uh, it was, I tried to connect all of the braid directly to the uh, wing nut on the uh, manual antenna tuner, but braid being braid, I couldn't get them on there, and it was a real pain to, uh, if I ever wanted to disconnect things and, and go outside with them, it was real tough to disconnect this. So I just drop down a few inches and made that the common point and it seems to have worked just fine and uh, the minute I did this I had no more uh, RF in the shack radio frequency in the shack the computer uh, USB ports uh, never dropped out again and the ICOM 7000 never shut off when I keyed up on HF like it was doing uh, with the old grounding configuration. So th this has been, a, for me, a uh, spectacular little drawing that really helped me correct the grounding uh, inside the shack. If you'll follow this and pick a single point coming off the antenna tuner, uh, or if you can get them all you know, on the antenna tuner to that one point, that that would be good too. And then just have a single piece of braid or copper strap. You can use copper strap too, and I'll again I'll show you that in a minute. You can run that out out to the uh, ground rod. All right. <clears throat> so uh, let me kind of show you a picture of that copper strap. Here's a picture of the bottom of a tower and you can see they've got a ground rod right here and they've got a leg of this uh, trip this tower with a piece of copper uh, strap and they've got that grounded into that ground rod so you can use this kind of material too you'll find that on the internet uh, available if you prefer that over braid uh, that would work uh, just as just as good and uh, probably would work even better but uh, I went with the braid and it it certainly has a uh, good enough ground for um, my uses anyway but strap will work just as well if not better can get a little pricey all right, so now you've got it grounded. Everything seems to be grounded, but you have to worry about something else, and that's what's called common mode currents. When you connect that coax uh, to the antenna, to your HF antenna, and you run it back into your shack, it's possible for current to run on the outside of the coax run all the way back in the shack and get into the radios and everything else. And that's called common mode currents. And there's ways to keep that out of the shack, which uh, with a what's called a choke ballon, a choke ballon. And I'm going to show you various types of choke ballons. You can buy them commercially and already built or you can make them yourself. So let me just show you various pictures of how you keep the RF out of the shack uh, from coming back down the outside of the coax. Okay, there's several ways you can do that. One way is you can wind a coax into a coil. You have to be careful you don't uh, overextend the coax. You know, you can only bend it so far and the manufacturers tell you what the diameter, the minimum diameter is that you can bend it. They have that in the specifications. 
if you overbend it, then you run the risk of uh, breaking the inside of the coax, the foil shield or the or the insulation or something like that inside. If you try to make the uh, wrap uh, too small for that type of coax, but here's a fella and uh, he made a uh, choke ballon off a of coax by uh, wrapping it around and around several times and then tying it with some uh, wire ties. And what happens is the current, this creates an impedance to the current and the current doesn't f keep flowing down the coax. It stops right here. That's the idea of this. Uh, so you can make them. Some people make this same idea uh, like this. They'll take a piece of PVC and they'll wrap the coax around and around and around the PVC and again this traps the uh, uh, RF uh, current that's coming down the coax and it it doesn't get past this choke ballon. So you can make them yourselves. The critical thing is the numbers of number of turns, the number of feet. You're going to need about 18 feet of coax wrapped around this thing right here, wrapped around this piece. It looks like a piece of PVC. So you're going to have to have at least about 18 feet to make it where it will definitely stop uh, any RF at whatever frequency you're going to be transmitting on. You need about 18 to 21 feet of coax. And you just wrap that much around here uh, tightly next to each other and then tie it off with some tie wraps and you've got a, a choke ballon. Some people mount these uh, right up there near the antenna, wherever that is, uh, as the very next thing from the antenna. But some antennas, especially wire antennas, require a certain amount of what's called counterpose wiring, coax, uh, to function as the other side of the antenna. And mine does this the long wire that I'm using, the QSO King, I believe it requires 40 feet of coax to act like a counterpose against the uh, the Q against the long wire. So in my case, I mounted mine right outside my window to the shack. So the antenna, uh, the coax wire acts as a counterpose all the way until it gets outside uh, my window and then it, it runs into one of these choke balance and uh, that stops the RF right there and it doesn't come inside with me. <clears throat> so it depends on the type of antenna you're running. If you're running a dipole, a regular dipole uh, that you constructed or something like that, you can put it, it should be placed right there uh, where the wires come together, right below them. And then your coax uh, comes off the end of it. <clears throat> There's a bunch of instructions on the internet of how to make these things. Like here's a little picture of one I saw on the internet. Again, notice it's 18 to 21 feet. That's the important part, and uh, many ways to make these. You can use uh, PVC. You could use a Coke bottle uh, that you go around and around a uh, two-liter Coke bottle or something like that. Again, you got to watch out on the minimum uh, diameter that you can bend this coax or you'll run the risk of breaking it. So you need to know that before you start winding up running one of these things. All right, there's another way to uh, make a choke ballon, uh, a little bit more expensive though, and that that is to go out and buy a whole bunch of ferret uh, type magnets and mix what they come in various different uh, mixes. <laughs> I didn't know that until I started uh, ham radio. 
there's different uh, types of magnets. Let's just say it that way. And you're, what you want to use is what's called Mix 31. Mix 31. And you can buy these on the internet, you know, however many you might need. And the only problem with this technique uh, is that you need a whole bunch of them. You're going to need about, uh, this is a large one. They come in different sizes. Let's, let's pretend this was a small one, a small what they call a bead, a bead ferret magnet. Uh, if you had those, you'd probably need 40 to 50 of these strung along the coax. And the coax would go right in here, of course. You put 40 or 50 of these together, and that would uh, uh, do the same thing as that uh, winding of that coax that I just showed you a minute ago. So the only problem with this, it takes a whole bunch of these to uh, have the same effect. So uh, could get a little pricey, but uh, let's see, I thought I had one. Yeah, well, here's what one looks like. And if you open this up, you'd see a uh, piece of coax, the coax running down through here with a whole, this whole tube is filled with uh, about 40 uh, mix 31 uh, ferrets around the coax. So it serves the same uh, choke function as the winding of the coax uh, around the PVC. This is another way to do it if you wanted to do it yourself. But you're going to need 40 to 50 to work, so it would be effective on all bands. <clears throat> now you can just jump out there and buy something and <laughs> you truly did that. Uh, I jumped out there. Uh, it just so happens that the fella that uh, makes the QSO King uh, Longwire also sells what he calls a line isolator. And here it is right here. It's not very expensive. And uh, he's already constructed one. It's You can tell it's not very big. It's only uh, six inches long or something like that. And basically I have this right outside my window. The coax coming from the antenna is plugged in right here and then another piece of coax uh, is here running into the shack. So this effectively stops all the RF uh, right outside my window. And again you can buy these commercially and this one happens to be from uh, the same guy that makes the QSO King uh, long wire antenna that I have uh, that I use for HF. Again, a line isolator or a choke ballon. Same thing. So, I hope that's helped you a little bit with grounding. And again, I want to refer you to this chart. This is how your equipment should be grounded uh, right behind uh, the desk that you're operating on. Again, single point ground. All the ground braids or, or copper straps, they all go to one spot and then they go straight outside. They do not, they do not do this. Okay? Again, you'll have ground loops if you do it this way. Alright, so with that said, uh, the next one will be uh, the ground rod part of it, which is outside out in the yard. And I'll go out there and take a few pictures. And then our next session will be on uh, how the ground rod and how I attached all this to the ground rod. It's very easy, though. Anyway, as I always say, hope this helped you in some way. Yeah, and I uh, wish you clear skies. And 73, and remember to keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth, like this picture on my screen, every single night, wherever you live, right over your head. See y'all later.